it's all about worship and to whom you worship. Volume 2, Video 1 The Exodus A Journey Experience Through the Bible Copyright 2022 by Doris N. Whaley Smith Unless otherwise indicated, scripture quotations are taken from the New King James Version Bible. Copyright 1979, 1980, 1982 by Thomas Nelson Incorporated. Used by permission. All rights reserved. Clip art by Christians Unite are used by permission. Gospel gifts illustrations and graphics are copyrighted and used with permission. Online internet public image and photos are used for educational purposes only. Brief quotations taken from the Illustrated Dictionary of the Bible. Copyright 1986, Thomas Nelson Publishers. Smith's Bible Dictionary. A division of Thomas Nelson Publishers since 1798. Vine's Complete Expository Dictionary of Old and New Testament Words. Copyright 1984, 1996, Thomas Nelson, Inc. All rights reserved. All glory and praise to my one and only true living God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It was He who inspired me to write this book, and to make audio videos from the book's title. It's all about worship and to whom you worship. A journey experience through the Bible. I was led by God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. All praise and glory in Jesus' name. What is it all about? It is all about worship and to whom you worship. Many religions are different, but most claim to worship the one true God. The question is, who are we worshipping? Our Bible, with the help of the Holy Spirit reveals to us the one true living God. What we can know of God is manifest in us, for God has shown it to us. Since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. The seven audio video series that you will hear, will be a journey through the Bible giving you a glimpse of what the children of Israel experienced while they were in the presence of the one true living God. This journey is to familiarize you with the people, places, dates, time, and influences that the true God and false gods had on the people of nations. The audio videos will cover an overview of God's creation, fall of man, the flood, and the beginning of nations. This was explained in the first volume called The Beginning of Nations. The following videos will cover an overview of the history of God's chosen people, their deliverance from Egypt, and they will cover an overview of the wilderness journey and the laws. The audio videos will cover an overview of the nation of Israel and their entrance into the promised land. They will cover an overview of the minor and major prophets during the days of the kings of Israel and Judah, up until they are exiled from their land, their return into their land, and cover prophecies of Daniel. The audio videos will expose Satan's lies of deception and knowledge of world events through Jewish history up until today. Through it all one will know and began to worship the one true living God, our Creator, our King, and our Savior who deserves all our devotion and allegiance, and all our worship. He is worthy of our worship, and He is worthy of our praise. He is our God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In different places throughout the videos, I will try to explain the errors in world religions and cults that claim to be Christian and are not. I will speak on the redeeming grace of the one true God who had promised to each believer eternal life through His Son, the Lord Jesus. Another purpose of the videos is to show Christ in the Old Testament and give scriptures and passages from the New Testament when they apply to Him. You should take the journey through God's Word with prayer, and He, the Holy Spirit will give you great understanding and wisdom in His Word. We must not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Deception is on the rise. Current events are recognized in relation to scriptures being fulfilled. Special attention to the Roman Empire, the Papacy, the Antichrist, false prophets, the Beast, the Rapture, the Tribulation, the Great Tribulation, and the current events happening now and just before the return of our Lord Jesus. Last, a clear understanding will be on the end times by covering prophecies from the book of Revelation, those fulfilled prophecies, 
and those which are to be fulfilled in the near future. It is not in any way that I made these videos to take the place of the Bible. I strongly encourage you to read your Bible daily, study history of the Christian Church, and use these audio videos only as study aids. My intention was not to write the series to offend anyone. My hope is that you be blessed by my message that is brought to you. The desire was very heavy in my heart, and I could do nothing but ask the Lord to lead me in preparing this message for you. I give God the glory and take no glory to myself. May the Lord bless you in His word that will lead you to eternal life. Time is running out. Do we need a Savior? The Lord says that His people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because of this, His people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. But there's hope, Jesus invites us to come to Him. He says, Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now Joseph's brothers had sold him to the Midianites, who in turn sold him to Potiphar in Egypt. The Lord allowed Joseph's brothers to do what they did, so that Joseph would already be in Egypt to save many people alive during the seven-year severe famine that was to come over all the earth. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. The Lord had given him the spirit of discernment and the interpretation of dreams. Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dreams concerning the coming famine and gave him advice on how to survive through it. He advised Pharaoh to select a discerning and wise man to set over the land of Egypt, and to appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years. He suggests to Pharaoh to gather all the food of those good years that were coming, and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh to keep food in the cities. The food would be reserved for the land for the seven years of famine, which would be in the land of Egypt that the land may not perish during the famine. The advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. Pharaoh appointed Joseph because he had the Spirit of God, and God had shown him all those things. Therefore, Pharaoh chose Joseph to be over his house and all his people, and they would be ruled according to his word. It was only in regard to the throne that Pharaoh was greater than Joseph. Joseph was in charge of opening all the storehouses. He sold to the Egyptians, and every country that came to the land of Egypt to buy grain, because the famine was severe in all the lands. This would be how Joseph come to reunite to his family, because the famine was also in Canaan, the home of his father. Joseph revealed himself to his brothers, and had them go to their father in Canaan that he and his household may come down to Egypt. They would dwell in the land of Goshen, be near to him, and they would have plenty of grain to eat during the food shortage. Jacob and his family did so, they journeyed to Egypt and settled in the land of Goshen, for Pharaoh gave the children of Israel the best of the land. All the persons who went with Jacob to Egypt, those who came from his body, besides Jacob's sons' wives, were sixty-six persons in all. The sons of Joseph who were born to him in Egypt were two persons. Therefore, all the persons of the house of Jacob who went to Egypt were seventy. Jacob and his family journeyed to Egypt and settled in the land of Goshen, which was the best of the land. They became fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied, and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Then Joseph died, all his brothers, and all that generation, and a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph, feared the multitude of people. He feared that one day the Hebrews might join their enemies and fight against them, and go up out of the land. Therefore, the new Pharaoh and the Egyptians set taskmasters over the children of Israel to afflict them with their burdens. The Hebrews were in the land of Egypt for 430 years. As the Lord had spoken to Abraham generations earlier that his descendants would be strangers in a foreign land that was not theirs, would serve them, and be afflicted by them 400 years. The Lord also promised that he would judge that nation and afterward the children of Israel would come out with great possessions. Now, the four hundred years are soon to expire. The Lord God now set in motion what he promised he would do. This will begin with the birth of Moses. 
Moses' parents were from the tribe of Levi. He was born to Jochebed, and Amram. His brother was Aaron, and his sister was Miriam. Moses was born during the time 1527 BC, when Pharaoh King Thutmose I, in 1539 to 1514 BC, ordered his people to kill every male child born to the Hebrew women by casting them into the river. However, because Pharaoh could not count on the midwives to kill the male children on the birth stools of the Hebrew women, for they feared the Lord, therefore he ordered his people to drown them. To save her son from the Egyptian authorities, Jochebed hid him for three months, for she saw that he was a beautiful child. When she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him daubed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. Miriam, the baby's sister, stood afar off to know what would be done to him. It was God's plan that Pharaoh's daughter should find the baby, so that he would be raised as her own son and brought up in the royal court as a prince of the Egyptians. The Lord wanted the child Moses to learn the wisdom of the Egyptians and be mighty in words and deeds. Therefore, when the princess came down to bathe at the river, and as her maidens walked along the riverside, she saw the ark among the reeds and sent one of her maids to get it. When she opened the ark, she saw the child, and he was crying, and she had compassion on him. The Lord was also determined that Moses should know his true family, therefore, he was brought up in his father's house for three months. When Pharaoh's daughter found him along the riverbank, his sister Miriam said to her, Should I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. Therefore, Miriam went to get their mother and she took the child, nursed him, and received wages for caring for her own son. When his nursing period was over, and the child grew, his mother brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. Pharaoh's daughter called his name Moses, saying, Because I drew him out of the water. She took him away, adopted him, and brought him up as her own son. Nevertheless, Moses knew who he was, for he was a Hebrew in heart. As time passed and Moses became a grown man, he went to his brethren and looked at their burdens. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his brethren. He killed the Egyptian and buried him in the sand. The next day he went out, saw one of his own brethren beating another Hebrew brother, and said to the one beating the other, Why are you striking your companion? The man said, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Pharaoh did hear of this matter and sought to kill Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. Rule, who was also called Jethro, was the priest of Midian. He had seven daughters. While Moses was sitting down by a well, Ruel's daughters came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flock. Then shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them, and watered their flock for them. When the daughters returned to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that you have come so soon today? An Egyptian delivered us from the hand of the shepherds, and he also drew enough water for us and watered the flock. They answered. The daughters of Ruel recognized Moses as an Egyptian because, to them, a Hebrew would not be dressed in Egyptian royal clothing. Therefore, they considered him an Egyptian. Ruel said to his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. Moses accepted the invitation of Ruel, and Ruel offered him a home to live with him, and Moses was content. Ruel gave his daughter, Zipporah to Moses as wife, and she bore him a son. He called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a stranger in a foreign land. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died, and a new king rose, then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage, and they cried out, and their cry went up to God because of the oppression. The Lord God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Lord looked upon the children of Israel, and he acknowledged them. One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, 
who was the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. The angel of the Lord, a visitation of the presence of Jesus, appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. When the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to look, he called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. Moses said, Here I am. The Lord said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Then the Lord said, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. But Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. The Lord said to Moses, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Therefore, I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, Behold the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel out of Egypt. Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? The Lord said, I will certainly be with you, and this will be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What should I say to them? The Lord said to Moses, I am who I am, and he said, You shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. This name of God will be the name that will distinguish, the one true God, from all other gods, which are not gods at all, but idols. Then the Lord assured Moses that his presence would certainly be with him. He gave Moses a sign to take to the Hebrews to show that he had sent him. Moses did the signs in the sight of the people. Therefore, the people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he looked on their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Moses became a great leader and prophet among the people who spoke for the Lord God. In using Moses to speak for him, the Hebrew people would have victory over the Egyptians, and all this will happen with the command of the Lord. The Lord God will inflict great judgments on that land, the Egyptian people, and their gods. His presence with Moses will lead the children of Israel out of Egypt and out of slavery. The Lord came down to deliver the children of Israel out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Just like, he came down to deliver the Israelites from the Egyptians and their gods, he came down to deliver us from the power of Satan to bring us up into the kingdom of God. It was for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. We had also been given a sign, Behold, the virgin has conceived and brought forth a son, and called his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Yes, and all the prophets, from Samuel and those who followed, as many as had spoken, had also foretold these days. Christians are also sons of the prophets, and of the covenant, which God made with the fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your seed all the families of the earth will be blessed. To Israel first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, also sent him to bless us, in turning away every one of us from our iniquities, from the slavery of sin. Now, the Lord said to Moses in Midian, Go return to Egypt, for all the men who sought your life are dead. Moses took his wife and his sons, Gershom and Eliezer, and set them on a donkey, 
and he returned to the land of Egypt. It happens, on the day the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt that the Lord spoke to Moses saying, I am the Lord, speak to Pharaoh king of Egypt all that I say to you. Moses said before the Lord, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips, and how will Pharaoh heed me? Nevertheless, the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother will be your prophet. You will speak all that I command you, and Aaron your brother will tell Pharaoh to send the children of Israel out of his land, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Nevertheless, Pharaoh will not heed you. This will be that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people, the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by great judgments, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord, when I stretch out my hand on Egypt, and bring out the children of Israel from among them. Moses and Aaron went in and spoke to Pharaoh, and said to him, The Lord said to let his people go, that they may hold a feast to him in the wilderness. However, Pharaoh mocked and said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? This was the first encounter with Pharaoh since Moses had fled from him. The Lord hardens Pharaoh's heart, so that he would not let the people go. The Lord raised Pharaoh up for this very purpose to show his power, that his name may be declared in all the earth, and that Pharaoh would know that there is none like the Lord God of Israel, the Lord God in all the earth. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe. Thanks.